The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Look at this. Look at it! Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Summerville Lumber. Looks good. Looks good. That's the big It's a Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Voting Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Burke. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes. And, of course, this is the start of two full hours of Candlepin Bowling here on the Winds. Glad you're with us. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Week two of our final season, uh, series of the regular season. And uh, last week, Mike Poulin got it off to a good start uh, with a quick win, and now he's looking for two in a row. Uh, he's looking for three more in a row, really, <laughs> but he's looking to try to make it two in a row first. Bob Kelly stands in his way. Battle of left-handers. All right, yeah. How often does that happen on television? Not very often. We don't have that many left-handed bowlers, right. really. What, what would you say roughly are the percentage uh, maybe on the tour? Got to be about 10% or less, right? I would think it would be less than that. I'd probably down to 1% or 2%. Is that right? Ten, yeah. Okay. Well, we've got two of them and two of the good ones here on Stars and Strikes here today. So let's meet them. First of all, our number four seed looking for his second win in a row from Hudson, New Hampshire, Mike Poulin. Okay. Mike comes in averaging 125. Uh, his roll-off score was 681. And Mike last week recorded a 371 in beating Mark Arnold in the first match of this series. So on the strength of that, Mike will return to try and make it two in a row now, and he'll be facing the other left-hander from Stoneham, Massachusetts, Bob Kelly. Okay, Bob Kelly has been averaging 123. Got to mention his high single at two individual high single at 210. And his roll-off score, 689. All right. Bonus ball contest comes up at the end of the show. $90 will be on the line there. Of course, $175 will be the runner-up check to the uh, bowler on this show. The winner, of course, moves in to the semifinal match next week. We'll get you more up-to-date on that after we take our first time out. And the bowling gets underway, too, right after this. Don't go away. Okay, five gentlemen have already qualified for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, the fifth annual event. And from the bottom up, they are Neil Gosselin with that 353, Bob Mazur, the 374, Tom Morgan, you see, Peter Flynn, and the big score, Paul Berger, that 464. But the big news, there's one spot still open, and one of our four remaining bowlers will fill it. We're left with our top four seeds after Mike Poulin knocked off Mark Arnold last week. So it's Mike and Bob this week, the battle of left-handers. The winner advances into the semifinals to face Gary Carrington next week. Rico Baldinelli is our number one seed. He'll be here in two weeks. Mike Poulin last week threw a 371 with 11 marks, three of which were strikes. And that was Mike's 11th win here on the wins. He is now 11 and 9 overall. And Mike couldn't make that jump. So he'll take the 10 box to start. And move over to lane 31. Here at Park Place Lanes, the home of Candlepin Stars and Strikes, as it has been for almost exactly nine years now. Scary thought, huh? Nine years. And if you'd like to be here in person when we tape the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, we'll remind you a couple of times during today's show, the taping is this Tuesday, April the 6th. April the 6th, day after tomorrow. We'll start at 9 in the morning, go till about 5 in the afternoon with a break for lunch. Be taping five programs, so if you'd like to see the show as it's taped here at Park Place Lanes, it's the day after tomorrow, April 6th, here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. Bob Kelly now. 
looking through the records, uh, I was kind of shocked to discover that it's been quite some time since Bob Kelly has been here in singles competition. The last time uh, he was here on the noon show was back in November of 91 when he lost a match to Dan Broder. Bob was here once this season in doubles. Bob Mazur was his partner. Bob with a 10 in the first, and now a spare lever, maybe a strike in the second. Got the pins moving forward that time, the five finally falling into, I believe it was the three pin for the strike. Of course, mark of the match, and it's a big one for Bob Kelly. And this is the second time that these two guys have faced each other here on Stars and Strikes. First time was almost exactly two years ago, March 24th of 1991. Mike Poulin won that one, 384 to 357. Yeah, I tried to get them to start talking a little trash with each other, but they <laughs> have no part of it. I couldn't instigate anything. <laughs> 27 through 3 for Mike Poulin. Full on the head pin and 410 left. Let's see where the wood settles down. Oh, he's got to use it. Either end, probably try to go right at the 10 pin. Let's see what Mike decides to do. No. Well, Mike, we both would have missed that one then. <laughs> Mike last week with the win over Mark Arnold. Mark Arnold continued on in the second hour last week on Stars and Strikes Doubles with his partner Bill Hart. And they got a win over Ed Marquis and Al Harwood. So Mark Arnold and Bill Hart will be back at 1 o'clock this afternoon here on the wins immediately following this show. Going for their second win in a row on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Bob, Bob Kelly maybe not quite. Almost had the double. Everything but the 8 pin. Still moving down there. But watch out, may have a roadblock. No, it's going to have a clear shot at it. Yes, for the spare. On strike. So it's 40 now through three. Bonus ball to come for Bob Kelly. Early lead of 13. Bob making his 20th appearance on the win. So he's just one behind Mike Poulin. In that department, oh, another big ball on a what looked like it could have been a full hit. Two and four. Piece of wood out front, but it's angled. The yeah, left-hand tip is closer to you. It's not flat as it may have seem on seem on the screen. Play it to the left, maybe. Well, he's got a second piece of wood behind. He's going to go left. Yeah, that's where I would have played it. <laughs> <laughs> Three marks in a row for Bob Kelly, and he's off to a fine start. Mike Poulin. Pushed that ball. Yep. Oh, look at the effort, though. Almost. Bill Hart and Mark Arnold at 1 o'clock will go for that second straight win on Stars and Strikes doubles against Larry Valcourt and Ed Jorlman. Jerolman. Ed Jerolman. Everything but the 10 pin for Mike Poulin. Looking for his first mark. He has been shut out the first five boxes. Make it six. Something you don't want to do with the likes of Bob Kelly. There's the 10 box. And Bob, as you see, steps up with a 21 pin lead already, plus he's working on a spare and he's got three marks in a row. Other than that, nothing's gone right for him. <laughs> Hasn't left a pin standing yet. Oh, he put two fingers up. He thought he had half Worcester, but it's four. If he doesn't want to leave any pins standing in this box, he's going to have some work cut out for him. Ooh. 6-10 left. Nine this time, 71 half for Bob Kelly. 
Bob and his wife Marianne uh, live in Stoneham, Mass with their three and a half year old son Cam. Cameron. Marianne, of course, no stranger to the lights and cameras here on Stars and Strikes, as well as uh, Marianne's sister, Jackie Sterner. One, three, and ten left for Bob. Bob works as a letter carrier for the United States Postal Service. He's a regular at uh, both Park Place and at Londonderry Bowling Center, our two taping locations. Well, it had Mark Arnold advanced to the show, we would have had the... Uh, <laughs> Battle of the Postman. That's right. <laughs> Could have called it the uh, Claven Trophy or something. <laughs> <laughs> they must hear that all the time. They must hate that. <laughs> I know what Mike's thinking. If I only had got that 10 pin for the spare, that would have been the fill. There's a spare in the seventh. Oh, and a nice fill. Let's see how nice. Will it be all of them? He Boy, that nine pin almost rocked into the ten. And then at first I thought he was going to be left with a nine, ten, no wood. And now he's got ten pin and a testy piece of wood out in front. Up on a left hand tip. Got it. Two in a row for Mike Poulin. That'll help stop the bleeding a little bit. Much needed two in a row. Just three weeks away now till the beginning of our premier event every year here on the Winds. Two of them. The Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. The fifth annual in singles and the second annual in doubles. They will begin on Sunday, April the 25th. Nice shot by Bob Kelly. He avoided the front piece of wood, used the one in the back to carry up the seven and the eight pins. And we can't say enough about the folks at Tri-State Megabucks who've been with us uh, wrapping up their fifth season now as major sponsors, presenting sponsors here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge all the great uh, support oh. that they've given us. There's a great shot there for Bob Kelly for a second consecutive spare. Two in a row for Bob Kelly, both great shots. He was able to match the two marks put up by Mike Poulin. However, Mike had nine on his first one. Bob Kelly only four. Mike will fill his second. A little high, just six. Three, six, four, seven left for Mike. Try to split the three and six. Ooh, nice effort there. And as for Tri-State Megabucks, need we remind you, just imagine being rich. Give it a try. Tri-State Megabucks. Spare in the 10th. 111 plus a ball. I don't want to put you on the spot, but aren't some of the uh, instant game tickets available at Bowles. bowling centers? Bowles yeah. Bowling Center, yes. Okay. I, I thought they were. In fact, some of them have Megabucks as well. I don't yet, but maybe someday I will. 119 for Mike Poulin. Maybe people in the Sweepstakes Commission are listening to me. <laughs> Kelly working on a spare. The three and the seven left. Eight on the spare. That wood starts flying around. This may go. He's got it. He's oh, got yeah. It. Three in a row. And they're all great shots by Bob Kelly. Just pinches the wood and the three pin. Jumps it into the seven. Well, Bob's going to have himself a lead at the end of this game. It's just a question of how much. Seven fill on that one. He's at 136 right now. Push the lead over 20 with this mark. 
not quite. Bob Kelly sharp in that first game, 139. Left only two pins standing, two uh, consecutive nine boxes in the middle of the game. Other than that, all marks and ten boxes. A 20-pin lead for Bob Kelly after one. We'll continue on Stars and Strikes right after these messages. Bob Kelly now with a 20-pin lead. Set to begin the middle game here on Stars and Strikes. In the first weekend of April. Where did the season go? Thought it would never get here, though, with all the snow. Oh, it snows nice. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to admit, I'm ready for spring. I mean, spring is here. I'm ready for it. <laughs> 10 for Bob Kelly. Four horsemen right. One, three, six, and 10 for Bob. 20 pin advantage after one. For a while, it looked like he was going to be ahead by a few more than 20. And another 10. That leaves the door open ajar for Mike Poulin. Now that's redundant, isn't it? Open ajar. Maybe that leaves the door ajar. Well, I don't know, but it's open. <laughs> <laughs> Nine drop for Michael, the seven pin. And there it is. Mike's fourth mark, and they've come in the last five boxes. See, so put on a charge at the end of the first game. It's a seven drop, two, four, and six. A tough break on the wood that time. It appeared that maybe take another pin. Yeah, it yeah. looked like it was coming across. Oh, let's oh, see. Oh, wow. oh, was there a doubt at all? <laughs> Both bowlers making some fantastic shots. Watch them split the two and the four here. Into the six pin. Great shot, Mike Poulin. Five marks in the last six boxes now for Mike. Bob Kelly back on the head pin. And he'll try his luck at the two, five, and ten with wood. But a makeable spare. Looks a lot worse than it is. Got some wood behind him to help. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Wood was able to keep the ball in play, and it just, everything was moving from left to right. Watch. There it is. Spare in the third. Great shot making, as you said, Dan. Both bowlers. Good match working here, and a big fill in all of them for Bob Kelly. Strike on spare. It's scary when Bob Kelly starts putting the old fist up, because <laughs> he knows he's putting the ball where he wants to. Mike Poulin, too, has got his game in gear. Opened with two spares, trying to make it three in a row. Push that ball a little bit, but drop seven. Cuts the lead down to six temporarily, but he's opposite two marks. No. That close, just a little full in the head pin, so those first two spares could be enough to keep him even with the board because Bob Kelly's put up spare strike. 16 pins now. You can see the lead. And Mike chops out the half Worcester this time. And Mike slides by the head pin again, so it'll be just a seven. When we come back, Bob Kelly leading by 19. We'll fill that strike in the fourth. Don't go away.
Bob Kelly strike up in the fourth. Bob has eight marks in the first 14 boxes of this match. Looking for the double and almost. <laughs> he just blew the other two nine pins out and nothing It came close to knocking the five pin down. Perfect hit. Just the five pin left. Well, Bob's feeling it right now. You mentioned it before the breakdown. He is right on target right now. He has still left only two pins standing. He's had two nine boxes. Everything else has been a 10 or a mark. Six fill on this spare. Getting a 10 here may be a challenge. I was just going to say, and Doug is on his way to break that string. <laughs> <laughs> One, seven, eight, and 10. Trying to make it four marks in a row. As Doug said, won't be easy. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> well, if body English counts for anything, Bob did everything he could on that <laughs> one. For the 10, yes. I'm safe. I apologize. Here See it is. It? Oh, the ball just flew by the 8-pin, too. Mike Pullen. Light hit. Let's see. Six ten left. That wood's going to be well out of play if it should come to rest. It looks like it will if it doesn't roll off on its own. Mike is opposite a spare here in the fifth, and he trails by 29 already, so... The spare. After the wait, that's mark number six for Mike Poulin. Oh boy, right through the middle, spread eagle. Oh my, boy. Mike really zeroes in on those cut shots and you can tell every time he tries one that he feels like he's got a shot and he very nearly cut the three pin over. You don't even have to watch the ball, just watches the body angle. So it usually tells the, if a ball is gonna be close to making one of those shots. The bowler knows that the ball is gonna be there or not. Bob Kelly trying to get another streak going. One, two, and 10. No wood. Mm, Who needs it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a nine. My goodness. That shocks everyone. <laughs> Back on the head pin though, spare leave this time. The six and the nine. The wood will be out of play for the purpose of this shot. Right at it and right on it for the spare. That's mark number 10 for Bob Kelly. Mike Poulin's been pulling the first ball a little bit to the right on lane 32, especially. One, two, and ten left for Mike. Nope. And the ten. So the lead right now is 31, but... Bob has a markup in the eighth. Mike's job right now probably just to try and keep things level if he can through the rest of this game, give himself a chance going into game three. He's going to be in a similar situation, perhaps, that he put Mark Arnold in last week. That very well could be. He's down trailing by 31 now. Bob Kelly's already posted a spare in the eighth. Mike will not 
mark in the eighth, and he's got just an eight box. So that makes it 33, plus this bonus ball by Bob Kelly. Eight spares, two strikes already for Bob Kelly. And let's wait a minute. Five, seven, ten. A couple pieces of wood between the five and the ten. Just try to catch a little piece of the front piece. Left hand tip, right there. Huh. <laughs> Excellent try, everything but the seven. And yet another 10 bucks. 122 through 9, as you can see. And as Doug said, only three pins have left, been left standing by Bob Kelly. This may be a challenge, though. The big five leave. Yeah, that goes to 3, 6, 10. 4, 7 left now. Boy, unbelievable. Very sharp. Bob Kelly, a 132, 271 through two games. It is a 132 with only four marks. That's right. Mike Poulin looking to make something happen. He's got an opportunity here with the two open frames. And a good opp opportunity here with a 610. Couple pieces of wood out in front. No problem. Spare in the ninth. Even if Mike were to go strike spare now here in the 10th, he would still trail by the original 20. Came into this game trailing by 20. Again, that first ball a little off to the right. Four horsemen. Time the ball seems to go straight. That time it seemed to break sharp at from left to right. The last minute came in full on the head pin. And it's a nine. Nine box for Michael. 236 is his count. So the lead is 35 for Bob Kelly going into game three. We will have it on Stars and Strikes after we have these words. Mike Poulin trying to get something started in a hurry here in game three. One of the questions that comes up from time to time is why when we normally have the bowlers go from one lane to another, do we sometimes, as Mike Poulin is now, have them roll two boxes in a row in the same lane. Why is that, Dan? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. We're, these guys were really going along at a fast clip. A lot of marks, so rather than have Doug, uh, a test of Doug's ability to do interviews at the end, uh, he's good for eight or ten minutes, but when he gets <laughs> to 15, he's... <laughs> so we try to slow the bowlers down a little bit. After that, it's tell jokes. <laughs> Someone asked you that uh, just recently. Just the other day, asked me, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, not quite for Bob. Shooting at the two, five, and eight. But ho hum, there's another ten box. He doesn't waste any time. <laughs> this is the only way you can slow Bob down. That's right. Keep him on the same lane and force him to wait for the reset. I mean, he's that type of bowler. When he's bowling well, the faster he'll bowl. He just wants to stay in that rhythm. Four horsemen left. One, two, four, seven. No wood. Hmm. Well, 
opportunity for Mike Pullen. He's working on a spare, so whatever the fill is, that'll cut into that 35-pin deficit. Mike has eight marks. All of them are spares. Six on this one. Bob Kelly has just ten marks, only two more, but the difference is he's had a couple of strikes, and he's also had three clusters of three marks in a row. And he's only left four pins standing. Gains a lot in count. Ten box for Mike. He gains six. Lead is 29. The runner-up today, a check for $175. The winner today, back next week for the semifinals against our number two seed, Gary Carrington. Oh, wow, what an effort actually cut the two pin down in to take out the 10, but it missed everything else. And an eight box for Mike. 43, really wanted to put two more marks up there. Bob Kelly now has the advantage of working on two open frames, leading by 29 at this point. And Bob Kelly is full. Spread Eagle with wood. You don't see this very often. Usually when the Spread Eagle happens, all four of the pins go into the pit. Well, there's the first box below a nine for Bob Kelly in this match. right back on the head pin, the 7, 9, and 10. And four pieces of three pieces of wood down. <laughs> what do you think? I think I'd push the reset button. <laughs> <laughs> now he's going to play the wood in front of this 9, 10, snap it. Oh, and hit it. Actually touched that 7 hit pin. It. He's yep. still rocking. And the 10. We'll take a little time out here. Mike Poulin has shaved six pins off the lead, and he's got six boxes to go. The near miss for Bob Kelly. We'll have a look, and we'll be right back. So Mike Poulin, six boxes to go. Got some mount some offense now. Well, that's one way of doing it. There is a start. Yes. That is the way to start. Nudges the five, and then uh, five nudges the seven for the strike. Right here looked pretty bad, five, <laughs> ten. Now you knew the five was going, and there's the bonus. Seven pin as well. Mike's first strike of this match. He'd love a double. He's or a spare break. 7-10. <laughs> well, he does have the wood. The frontmost piece of wood is the piece right in front of the 7-pin. Yeah, Mike's going to go right up to the foul line and take a look. He may want to play the 7-pin wood on the right-hand tip because another one behind that. Plus, you have one in the channel that could snap it out, too. I think he might have a shot at this if he hits that right-hand tip. A lot of things could happen. Plays it red line, and it doesn't carry. I think he was going a little left, and that might not have been a bad choice with a piece of wood in the channel. We'll never know. The 10. So 29 pins in those two boxes for Mike.
Bob Kelly in a little bit of a drought without a mark here. He hasn't had one since the eighth box of the uh, second game. Well, that looks good, but I think that hasn't got the angle to carry the five. Oh, oh I take it back. Wow. I didn't, didn't think it was deep enough to carry the five. Start wearing my glasses. The fill is seven. I try the ten pin. Piece of wood in front of the ten. Now he's going right down the center. Ooh, didn't carry it. It looked good for a moment. <laughs> Bob was directing the ball to try and push it back toward the seven pin. It didn't work. See that one right there is nestled against the sidewall too. That would have snapped out of there. So well, Mike Poulin gains three more pins in that exchange. He now trails by 26 with four to go. So that way makes Candlepin bowling so unique is that there's sometimes multiple ways of playing shots. Sometimes none of them work. Correct. <laughs> the one, three, seven, eight, and ten. Mike Poulin and he needs it. Does not get it. He's in virtually the identical spot that Mark Arnold was in last week against him. Trailing by almost 30 with four boxes to go. Now three. Must mark. Just slides by the head pin. He'll shoot at the 110. Looking for his 10th mark and misfired it. Mike didn't even want to look at that. It's a nine. Well, Bob Kelly with one mark here. And these next two could close Michael out. And he'll shoot at the one and the three. Very makeable spare, obviously. Ooh. All of a sudden, those marks that were coming so easily earlier in the match aren't there. It's a 10. <laughs> Big nine drop. Everything but the six. That's the ball he was throwing earlier in the match. He had a pretty good cushion coming in. And that will help the cause. All the action on Candlepin Stars and Strikes brought to you in part by our friends at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, Route 28, Salem, New Hampshire. Come to Salem and save at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. And also our friends at Somerville Lumber. Get it right the first time. Visit Somerville Lumber. Oh, and Mike misses the single. Mike Poulin will stay on lane 32 now for his final box of the match. The score this week will be somewhat below that 371 he had a week ago, and he almost rocks the seven down was, for a strike. He was ready to reset it. He thought that was going. <laughs> Still rocking, but he's going to have to hit it again. <laughs> That'll do it for the spare. Mark number 10.
And the fill is seven for 118 and a 354 for Michael. Mathematically, this next ball will do it. Bob Kelly at 354 right now. Bob had a shot at a 300 game, or 400 triple rather. He still does if he were to mark twice. Two big ones. There's one. He would need 129 for a 400 series, so he'll need a big fill here and another mark. Next week, it'll be Bob Kelly against Gary Carrington. Another nine drop. And there's the spare, 120, so 391 with a ball to go. Nine pins for 400 for Bob Kelly. Game of streaks for Bob. Had it all together the first two, and... Uh, Little dry spell the third. Now he's turning it on again. This is the fourth time in a row he's had three. Fourth time I should say he's had three marks in a row. A six, a 126, and he comes just short with a 397. But plenty enough for the win over Mike Poulin and Bob Kelly. will move into next week's semifinals. We will move into our bonus ball contest and chat with the bowlers after this timeout. Stay right where you are. And welcome back here on The Winds, Candlepin Stars and Strikes in the books for another week as we finish week two. But don't forget we have Stars and Strikes doubles coming up in just a few moments as Mark Arnold and Bill Hart go for their second straight win. That's immediately following here on The Winds from the Londonderry Bowling Center. But right now let's talk to the bowlers. First of all, let's have Mike Poulin come on up. Michael, with the uh, win last week, not so fortunate this week. We have a check for you for $175. Uh, it can change uh, that much from one week to the next. Yeah, I didn't get too many breaks and I didn't bowl that good but Buddy had the pressure on me the whole time bowl well and uh, these pins have fallen real good <laughs> I mean I mean you earn them he bowled well he bowled real well uh, he was on uh, seemed like he made uh, all the big shots when he had to he was right on target most of the time yeah right and also I get a lot of wood which helps yeah. and I kept blowing the wood away and I need all the wood I can get. <laughs> well, congratulations. You've been here a lot uh, yeah. this year. Unfortunately, we're not going to see you on the Tournament of Champions, but I'm sure we'll uh, be seeing you soon in the fall. Thanks, well, Mike. Thank you. I had a lot of fun. All right, Mike. Thanks very much. Congratulations. And now uh, Bob Kelly to try and uh, win our bonus ball contest. Lane 31 will do it, Bob, if you will. And uh, we've got $90 on the line and also a couple of sets of brand-new bowling balls if uh, we can get a match here. Well, let's see. It's seven, Dan. See if you can reach in and pull out a seven. It's... Uh, Let's see. No. Oh, my oh, goodness. No. You're not going to believe this one. <laughs> Anna. Wow. And on top of everything else, it's a name that it's Abazorius, I believe. Anna Abazorius from Concord, New Hampshire. And you're not going to believe what Anna did. She originally had a seven. Then she crossed it out and put a six. Oh, Anna. That's a devastating defeat for you, but we will send you a very nice consolation prize, I guarantee you. But uh, the, jack the, ja the jackpot will go up to $100 next week. A win for Bob. And uh, is it true what we were saying uh, on the air earlier? You, it looked like you were really confident. You really felt like you had control of what you were doing, especially the first two games. Uh, when you're bowling something like Tony, like Mike, you have to mm -hmm. be on your game. Uh, Mike got a couple of tough, you know, bad breaks up there. And I got out of the gate early, and they put a little pressure on him, and he just... He started going through the middle. I started getting a couple of breaks, and that's what puts you over the top. And also able to get those marks clustered together, which helps. Yeah, and <laughs> plus picking up the tens. You know, I picked up. You know, yep. it's unusual for me to get a lot of nines and tens. And I knew that you know if a match was going to be close, it was going to come down to that. So I tried to get as many tens as I could. Next week, a guy named Carrington coming in. You ever heard of him? Yeah, another slouch. <laughs> another slouch. Okay, bring him on. <laughs> All right, we'll have him for you next week, Bob. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Bob Kelly gets the win, and. Uh, We'll set you up for next week. We're, we're left now with our top three bowlers in this series. Bob Kelly at number three, and next week Gary Carrington comes in for the semifinal match. The winner of that one will get Rico Baldinelli in two weeks, and uh, Bob will now uh, 
get the challenge of trying to make two in a row. Mike Poulin unable to do it today. Jeez, uh, I think Gary would see this show before he comes on. <laughs> we could have some fun next week. <laughs> well, they know each other very well. They bowl in the world team together, and uh, this could be a great match. All right, stand by again in just a few minutes. Coming up after a brief break from the Londonderry Bowling Center, Stars and Strikes doubles as Bill Hart and Mark Arnold go for their second straight win. Until then, and don't forget, right back here next Sunday at 12 noon for Stars and Strikes. For Dan Murphy, I'm Doug Brown. So long, everybody.